you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. You will hear a university administrator telling a group of new students about the central campus buildings and the facilities they provide. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Welcome everyone to the Brandon Complex, the geographical and we could say spiritual heart of this university. This is basically where everyone eats too, as you can see by looking around. There are many different cuisines here, Chinese, Indian and Middle Eastern, plus the usual fare of a local type, all in that corner over there. We have many shops here too, but the biggest is Wilson's, right there, providing clothing and hardware. That's next to all the restaurants. Now, on the opposite side of Wilson's we have three shops. The one in the corner there, closest to the restaurants, is for DVDs. Yes, the DVDs are cheap and affordable, and you can also rent DVD players as well. Moving on, in the corner directly opposite Wilson's is the Student Union office. Incidentally, you are all encouraged to join the Student Union, as a Student Union card gives you many benefits, including discounts on basically everything you can buy here at the Brandon Complex. Outside this complex, on the other side of the road, you can just see it from here in fact, is a building that we call by the rather unusual name, the H Building. Next to this, on the other side of some trees along the main road, is the Engineering Institute, but that doesn't have anything to do with the Brandon complex. One last thing is that just outside this door, near us here, you can see a grassy oval patch, well, that's the playing field for what we simply call the fitness room, which is alongside. So you can put on some calories here at the restaurants and then burn them off at the fitness room afterwards. Oh, I forgot to mention this shop right here, in the middle, beside the student union. It's the bookshop. And, as you can see, it's always busy, always popular. You can buy newspapers, magazines and stationery there, plus a few clothing items as well, just as you can at Wilson's. Why don't you go and take a look right now? Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. During your stay here, you might want to know what there is to do. Let's turn to the plan so I can familiarize you with the layout of the park. Most tourists would choose to stay in our guest house, located in the southeast corner. It features 63 tastefully appointed guest rooms, many of which offer spectacular views of the park. You'll find a home away from home at our guest house. 
But for those who want to experience the natural beauty up close, there is also a campsite. When you get out of the guest house, go straight ahead, turn right at the end of the road. To your left, there is a campsite amongst the trees where you could spend a night under the stars together with owls and chipmunks. If you look at the top left of the plan, you will notice a picnic area. You can either bring your own food or we can deliver food to you. Barbecue is an option. The business centre is situated directly opposite the picnic area. It provides flexible, fully serviced offices, conferencing suites, meeting rooms and is equipped with the latest multimedia facilities. Wired as well as wireless high-speed internet is available within the entire premises. The centre is designed to cater to both individual travellers and corporate groups. Visitors can also go to the museum, which holds a vast collection that exhibits local history and a natural habitat. You start from the guest house, just turn left at the first conjunction, then walk past the tea house, turn right. You'll see the museum after making the third right. Have you found it? Pretty easy, right? To spend a delightful afternoon with a book and a fresh cup of coffee, you can go to the only cafe in the park. From the guest house, you go straight, then take the second right, and you'll see the cafe right in front of you. You might want to check out our all-season tennis court, which offers instruction for all ages and skill levels. It is located right opposite the cafe. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Now, let's start by seeing where you can go. As you can see on our map in the brochure I've given you, we are here at the reception block. We have a famous mill which is used for making and processing materials such as steel and coal. To visit it, just go straight ahead north along the path in front of you and you'll find it at the end of the path now towards the east go along the path from our starting point turn left to the corner and then turn right there is a car park at the east end of the lane to the west there is a museum past the shop around the crossroads and it is just located at the west end of the road and by the way the shop is specialized in selling a variety of all related souvenirs including key rings, postcards, tin-made Lewis chessmen, and even Roman soldiers which are made from beautiful pyrite. If you are interested in the laboratory where scientific experiments, analyses and research are carried out, it is situated at the southern part of the park, opposite the shop. I bet you'll be happy to hear that this laboratory is also used for gold and crystal refinement, so don't miss this one for the sake of it. I assume by this time, you'll all need some rest and refreshment. 
So we have an excellent cafe which caters for delicious food and beverages at the other side of the road next to the shop. Of course, if you want to spend some time in the fresh air, we have a perfect picnic area which is just right and northeast of the reception block. Further east, there is a path leading to the northern part of the park, and at the end of it is the toilet. Now, most of the visitors would choose to use the mailbox and send the beautiful postcards to their friends. To reach it, just... Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Welcome to everyone here. I hope you enjoy your stay in our village and enjoy the local scenery. I'll tell you a bit about the forest and mountain tracks in a minute. But first, I'll just give you an idea of where everything is in the village. So... We're here in the Tourist Information Center, and when you come out of the center, you're on Willow Lane, just opposite the pond. If you want to get to the supermarket for your supplies of food and water, go right. That's the quickest way, and then turn right at the top of Willow Lane, and it's the second building you come to, opposite the old railway station. If you're planning on doing some serious climbing and you need some equipment, we do have an excellent climbing supply store just five minutes walk away. Turn left once you're outside the Tourist Information Center. Take Willow Lane all the way up to Pine Street. You want to go left along here. Then keep walking and go up Mountain Road on your right until you come to the next turning on the left. Head down there, and you'll come to the climbing supply store. If you get to the small building that sells ski passes, you'll know you've gone too far. You also need to head to Pine Street for the museum. It's small, but well worth a visit if you're interested in the history of the village and the old gold mining industry. So, when you reach Pine Street from here, you'll see the old railway line on the other side of the road. Turn left into Pine Street and keep going until you come to Mountain Road. And just past here, the museum will be on your left, just behind the railway line. Don't worry about crossing over the tracks. The train stopped running through here in 1985. If you're planning on following one of the easier forest walks, you might like to hire a bicycle. To get to the hire shop, again, you need to head to Pine Street. On the left-hand side of Pine Street, you'll see the town hall. Go down the little road that you come to just before it, and you'll find the bike hire shop just behind the hall. They have a good range of bikes, so I'm sure you'll find something that suits your needs. Last but not least, if you're hungry after a long day's trek, I can recommend our local cafe. Again, when you leave the Tourist Information Center, turn right and follow Willow Lane until it joins Pine Street. And right opposite, on the far side of the railway tracks, is the cafe. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 3. Section 3. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Now, let me just tell you a bit about what you can see in the Sculpture Park. If you look at your map, you'll see the visitor centre, where we are now, at the bottom, just by the entrance. Since we only have an hour, you might not be able to get right around the park, but you can choose to visit some of the highlights. You might like to take a look at the Joe Tremaine sculptures, which are displayed on this side of the upper lake, just behind the education centre and near the bridge. They're really impressive, but please remember not to let your children climb on them. One of our most popular exhibitions is the Giorgio Catalucci bird sculptures. They're just across the bridge on the north side of the lower lake. I love the way they're scattered around in the long grass beside the lake, looking as if they're just about to take to their wings. You could also go to the garden gallery. It's on this side of the upper lake. From the visitor centre, you go to the education centre, then keep on along the path and you'll see it on your right. There's an exhibition of animal carvings there which is well worth a look. We also have the Long House. That's quite a walk. From here, you go to the bridge and then turn left on the other side. Soon you'll see a winding pathway going up towards the northern boundary of the park. Go up there and you'll find it at the top. They have some abstract metal sculptures that are well worth seeing if you have time. OK, well, now... if you're before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Now, we've also put together a map which we sent out to all the residents in the area. And on the map we've marked the proposed changes. Firstly, we'll plant mature pine trees to provide shelter and shade just to the right of the supermarket in Days Road. In order to address the traffic problems, the pavements on the corner of Carberry and Thomas Street will be widened. This will help to reduce the speed of vehicles entering Thomas Street. We think it's very important to separate the local residential streets from the main road, so the roadway at the entrance to Thomas Street from Days Road will be painted red. This should mark it more clearly and act as a signal for traffic to slow down. One way of making sure that the pedestrians are safe is to increase signage at the intersections. A Keep Clear sign will be erected at the junction of Evelyn Street and Hill Street to enable traffic to exit at all times. Something we're planning to do to help control the flow of traffic in the area is to install traffic lights halfway down Hill Street where it crosses Day's Road. Now, we haven't only thought about the cars and traffic, of course. There's also something for the children. We're going to get school children in the area to research a local story, the life of a local sports hero, perhaps and an artist will incorporate that story into paintings on the wall of a building on the other side of Hill Street from the supermarket. And finally, we've agreed to build a new children's playground, which will be at the other end of Hill Street, close to the intersection with Carberry Street. Wonderful. Now, what's the next stage? Well, the final plan... Will... 
That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4 First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now, if I can just show on this wall map here where they all are, uh, you might like to go and have a look round. If you come into the main university entrance, at the first junction, you'll find that Brown Hall is on the corner opposite the theatre. So, you're nice and near the station here, though I think it can get a bit noisy with traffic. The same applies to Blake Residence, which is directly facing the junction to the university entrance. These halls are often used by medical students and such like, as they're out all day, so don't notice the noise. Anyway, if you then walk along Campus Road towards the main circle, You'll see the library on the corner, and Queen's Building is just past that as you head north. You will find that it is quieter here, and you may get fewer visitors. By the way, the circle is quite a feature of the campus, as it's set into the hills and has a brand new sports centre in the middle. It's worth going to look around it. Now, the Parkway Flats are on the opposite corner to the library, facing the circle, as you head towards the main buildings. The main buildings are only about a five-minute walk from here, and places in these halls go quickly, so my advice is to reserve your place as soon as possible. Then, Temple Rise is inside the circle, next to the sports centre, but further from the main university buildings. Now, if you'd like to go off and physically look... Okay, thanks. How can I get from here to Hackney, then? Right, well, you can choose. Uh, we're here at the information office, OK? Uh, now, next to us, on the corner of the High Street and Sweet Street, is the bus stop, opposite the bank. Uh -huh. The bus goes all the way to Hackney, but it is a very indirect route, so it could take ages. Uh. If you want to take the train, walk down the High Street towards the city, go past the bank, and on your left is the station just mm -hmm. before you get to the post office. Mm. There's a mainline service to Hackney Wick, so if you need to get into the centre of Hackney, you may need to pick up a bus when you get there. Mm. Opposite the post office, on the corner of Hart Lane, is the tube entrance. You'll see the big signs. That's probably the best way to get there, though you may have to change. It's probably best if you go and get a travel card first. <sighs> To get to the ticket office, you go out of here onto the High Street. Then turn into South Street 
and the ticket office is on your right opposite the cinema. Mm. Of course, you may decide it's quicker to take a taxi. <laughs> but it's a long way, so I think it'll be very expensive. If you do want to get a cab, then the rank is outside here, just opposite the office. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your